Hello everyone and welcome to the third part in the Edgar Wright Director Derby podcast series that is done by me and my brother Icon Colt. Say hello. What's up? We just watched Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. Was this your first time seeing this movie? No, this is the second time. But you reacted to everything like it was your first anything. time. I remember absolutely like nothing. All right, so what, like the last scene, I might have fallen what, asleep or something. What did no you idea. think of? I know I haven't. Uh, I don't think I saw ever the beginning of the movie, or maybe I. Maybe it was on TV, and that's why we don't remember it well, or something. No, I watched it with Marks and Hope. Uh, well, what um, did you quiet. think of the movie? It was awesome. I loved it. I was like, Love this it. is this is much better than I remember, and I I didn't give it enough credit. How do you feel about it compared to the last two films? It's hard to say because it's completely different, mm-hmm. but it's definitely the same. I guy. mean, more shits going on, so it's like a bigger, bigger scope, bigger project, and right. it was pretty well done. So to clarify right from the beginning, because someone's going to ask, and it's going to be important anyway. I don't know why. I- blamed it on other people i've read the comic uh almost exactly a year ago i think and it's like the greatest thing ever it's one of my favorite fucking comics of all time favorite things of all time you have not i want to hear your general opinions of the movie like untainted by any of my ideas like is there anything you thought about the characters or you likes or dislikes or like what i thought it was super cool now, you have described part of the comics to me, or at least how the characters are, so I was thinking about that while I was watching it, where I was Adler. thinking about, because the first time I watched it, having known nothing about Scott Pilgrim, I just thought it was like Hot Topic the movie going oh, into God. it, and then, because, uh, what's his name? This, the character comes off as kind of like a huge pussy because of, uh, right, um... because of... What's his name playing him? Why am I blanking on his name? Yeah, I, I know, was thinking right? it the whole Who's fucking fuck? movie. But anyways. The dude from fucking Superbad yeah. and Juno and Arrested Development. But initially going into it, he's such like a, a passive kind of right. character. But then it, knowing, because he said from the comics that he's not really like that at all. And then watching it again, I was thinking about that. And I was like, okay, well, I see where he's actually kind of a jackass. And I wouldn't have noticed before because I was like kind right. of predisposed it's, to it's thinking a he weird, was a nice guy. It's a weird casting choice, but I don't know if it's like I don't know if it's his fault or if it's like like I don't know I don't know that it's bad acting or that he doesn't portray the role well as it is that it's really hard to pull off the Michael way these characters... Michael Sarah, there you go. <laughs> it's really hard to pull off the way the characters in the comic are in a movie because the thing is all of the characters in the comic which has a is very stylized look very expressive characters, and every character looks really fucking distinct in the comic. Mm-hmm. Like, because they're all, they're all, like, the drawing style of each character is super similar, so their faces have to look really different for them to be differentiable. So, like, a lot of the characters have, like, those sort of, like, this one face that is my emotion at all times kind <laughs> of look, and you can't really pull that off with live actors. Like, for instance, the leader of the band, which is Stephen some Stephen Stills, I think. What did you think of him in the movie? Just he seems was like some like, guy. Yeah. He and was... in the comics, he has this look where he always looks like he's like half dead because he's got uh-huh. the beard, but his eyes are always like just kind of like d- dark circles under them, you know? Because he like mm. he, he's obsessed with the band, but he seems a lot more deadpan in the comics. A lot, yeah. And, and he's like definitely lively in the movie where he was like desperate as hell. Right, I mean, he is desperate in the comics, but it's because he really, really, really cares about the band, and, you know, like, he gets a whole arc in the comics, where it's about him, like, becoming so serious about music that they never get anything done, because he goes into the studio for, like, months, because he's, like, a super perfectionist, so... He just keeps, like, trying to rewrite the songs until they're perfect, and as a result, the band never makes any progress, and it's part of, like... The thing about the comics... That really separates it from the movie is that the comics are five total volumes, and it's not so much that more things happen as it is that there's more time for things to happen. There's just more space for the like the the third volume is the one where they fight Envy and the vegan guy, Mm. and that one battle lasts the entire third volume out of a five volume comic series because. They, the whole relationship dynamic between each of them dated the other two, Mm. it, like, it drags on. Like, it's supposed to feel like this big, 
agonizing. Like, the whole third volume is just, like, depressing and sad because they're both going through a hard time because of the reappearance of these characters and stuff. And so it's like the the whole thing is meant to just weigh on you and feel like you just want it to be... Because everyone in the... All the characters just want it over with. They're just like, fucking, I don't want to do this anymore. So... Like, they don't even... That's not even the first fight in the comic. Like, they fight before that show. Mm -hmm. Like, he meets him and they fight in, like, a supermarket. And then they fight in the show, uh, like, afterwards. So, I mean, the fight itself is almost the same. But the emotional context is just much weightier in the uh, comics. Which kind of can't be held. I mean, you're transforming it into a short movie. And it's a case of... I get that, you know, I'm not one of those dumbass fans who's like, why didn't they put everything from the comic? It's like, because the movie can only be 90 fucking minutes long, they're not going to be able to fit, you know, every fucking character subplot. But there is one that really bothered me. Like, I was okay, like, Steven Stills, I was like, you're not going to be able to fit him in there. He, you know, they just kind of made him a one-off character or whatever, that's fine. They didn't try to develop Kim and Scott's thing at all, they just kind of made you know about it because it was kind of important to, you know like, developing Scott's character, but Kim has, like, a really expansive story arc in the comic that's never really touched on the movie, but the one that bothered me was Knives, Mm. because they really show a lot of Knives in the beginning of the movie, and then she doesn't really matter throughout the rest of it until the very end. She kind of does. She's always there. Yeah, okay, but the thing is, (laughs) in the comics, Knives and Ramona find out about him cheating in, like, volume three or Mm. two. So, they already know about that. They become super good friends. And I'm pretty uh-huh. sure, if I remember correctly, Knives fights the ninja girl for Scott. Yeah. Like, she... Knives becomes this fucking badass samurai character. Uh-huh. Like, because her father is, like, this weird-ass samurai dude, <laughs> even though she's Chinese. And she, like, takes on this... Basically, she grows up before Scott does in the comics. Like, mm. that's the whole point of her arc, is that she... She was so childish when she met Scott, and just, like, him breaking up with her incites her whole transformation into adulthood, and she just kind of gets it really quick because she's so disillusioned by everything. She finds out that there's more cool bands other than Sex bob and they're not really that, you know, like, that <laughs> special. She, you know, dates a couple other guys. She, I'm pretty sure she makes out with Kim in one of the oh, issues. God. Like, they both get drunk and make out because she turns 18 in the comics. Yes. So, Knives gets, like, a lot of character development. She's one of the coolest characters in the comic books, and it feels like the movie only has half of her character development by the end of the story. Like, you know, she is in a place at the end of the movie where she would have been halfway through the comic books, and she does a lot after that. So, I felt like I was missing out with Knives, but, again, it's like a thing that can't be helped, but it's like, if you were going to show so much of her in the beginning of the movie, Mm. you know then, I don't know, they could have put less of him dating Knives at the beginning, because we kind of got the point pretty quick. Mm. I mean, they showed a lot of it, like, it really made it seem like she was going to be really significant, and then she kind of ends she up was. being, like, minor. Maybe. I, maybe She's I'm blind. She's significant to him of... being a jackass and completely being oblivious to it, and that's what helps him right. get, get his self-respect yeah. in the end, is that he was totally blowing off the fact that he was a jackass to Knives, even though he's criticizing Ramona for being a jackass. Yeah. So that was his his hypocrisy that he needed to overcome and realize that he was a fucking jackass. Yeah. I guess what they really did is just they stripped de- knives down to the parts of her character that are relevant to Scott Pilgrim. Yeah. As opposed to letting her be her own character in the comics, which again is something that can't necessarily be helped, but whatever. Ramona is almost exactly the same in the comics as she is in the movie. Mm-hmm. Um, perfectly cast, perfectly acted, perfectly scripted. She was exactly the same character. Ramona was kind of the least interesting character in the comics. Um, she's more interesting in the movie just because it's actually centered around her and there's not other m- characters stealing her spotlight. Yeah. But she was not that particularly interesting in the comics. Um, I thought she was a fine character. Cause some people don't like her at all. I thought she was fine. Just... You know, she doesn't do as much because she's so, you know, supposed to be mysterious and everything. And she's mostly just there to be like the the motivation for Scott. Yeah. And yeah, like the other she's characters just have so much. No, 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 <laughs> no, no. She's not that bad. <laughs> Britta is an awful character. I don't know yeah. what the fuck they were thinking. Edgar Wright Another... wouldn't write a character that bad. <laughs> But I definitely felt like, you know, I didn't feel like the the women characters, like, 
didn't have their own personalities, but at the yeah. same time, the movie definitely only really shows you how they're relevant to Scott. Yeah. You don't get a lot of scenes of like the girls talking among themselves, which you get a lot of in the manga. Because the movie the it comic. sticks to being about Scott. It's about right. him. The comic Ramona's would just like a means to the him comic would definitely himself. pass the Bechdel test, whereas the movie doesn't. <laughs> so you know that I guess that's the big separation when it comes to the female characters. It's just that the movie is not. Uh, the the comic is more of an ensemble cast, whereas the movie is just about Scott Pilgrim. And I get why that was necessary. It just means it's not as good, and it can't be as good because it just doesn't have the space to be as good. Because Scott Pilgrim, the comic, has so many characters that are so good. Another character that the movie does perfectly is Wallace. He is the so best. fucking great in both the comics. I mean, he fills the exact same role. Like, he doesn't have any more development in the comic that's missing. He just always is this amazing fucking gay dude who he lives with Scott and just is awesome all the time. Another, once again, perfectly cast. I couldn't have even imagined a better, like, I couldn't think of anyone who I would be like, oh, no, he's terrible, put in someone else. No, he was fucking perfect. But yeah, like, Stephen Stills in the comic, uh, his whole relationship with that girl who swear, who's, like, swearing we get blanked out, yeah. their relationship's fleshed out a lot more. Stephen becomes gay in the end, spoiler alert. What the fuck? He turns out to be gay by the end of the comic, mm. um, which is fucking hilarious. The ending of the comic, by the way, is a fucking mindfuck, and I like the m end of the movie better, because the comic's <laughs> ending is so bizarre and out of left field, which, I mean, mm -hmm. everything with Scott Pilgrim kind of is, but the ending of the comic makes no fucking sense, and it kind of just leaves you going, what the hell did I just read? Whereas the m ending of the movie f made sense. Funny, because the first time I saw it, I thought, what the fuck just happened? But I also wasn't paying that much attention, so this time I was like, oh yeah, that that was fine. <laughs> um, Adrian Brody, that's not who it is. Who's the guy from Born to Death who played the uh, bad guy? I don't fucking know. Uh, he looks like Adrian Brody, Weird looking guy. but with a smaller nose. He's a fucking obnoxious prick in the movie. Um, one scene I completely hated, though, was when Matthew Patel does his, like, song number with the fucking... <laughs> it's so fucking weird. It was stupid. I was like, why are they singing? It. Like, because they never say, like, who he is or, like, what he does. Yeah. They never establish that he's, like, a singer or something. <laughs> he just shoots fireballs and he has hipster vampire ghosts. I was like, That's why? The... What's the logic there? It's like the... It's the point in the movie where you know what you're getting into finally, and you're like, right. oh, this is that kind of thing it, that it's, we're doing. It's like that in the comic, too. Like, there's it, definitely... After that, you're prepared for anything to happen. Right. Whereas up to that, you didn't know what you are getting into. Yeah, in the comic, it does the same thing. Like, the only weird thing that had been mentioned up to that point was Ramona talking about going through his headspace, yeah. and then all of a sudden... And, you know, you see all the little gamey stuff, like the little life bars and all that, yeah. and you're just thinking it's metaphorical, and then all of a sudden, a dude bursts through the roof and fucking like they have a beat down fireballs and he gets shit. dissolved into coins <laughs> but like in the comic his fight is so over quickly like they don't he's yeah. not i mean it is in the movie too but he does not shoot fireballs and have an army <laughs> of singing vixens and i felt like they just did it to make the scene stand out more yeah. like you know just to make it so it wasn't just someone who got blown through but why that way mm -hmm. it was so irrelevant to his character <laughs> like the skateboard guy they fight him in a skateboard battle the base guy they have a base off and he's a vegan and they have a vegan thing and like every every other boss has a relevant thing yeah. but his is just he summons fucking demons weird, to sing with him it was very bizarre and i didn't see the point but other than that the one thing i took away from this movie more than anything is that's fucking hilarious yeah i laughed really the entire I time about it i laughed cons there was a lot of big laughs like i laughed yeah. Almost throughout the entire movie. Probably one of the funniest movies I've ever seen. <laughs> that alone is worth giving it, like, a triple plus rating. Like, yeah. even if... Because I feel like... I don't know that if I hadn't read the comics, I'd like the movie more. I feel like maybe I would because it would have been so overwhelming. But at the same time, I did see the movie in part before reading the comics. And I remember just being like, I have no fucking idea what's going on. <laughs> you know, I wasn't paying that close attention, but having read the comics made me comprehend things a lot. But like you said, I never would have thought of Michael Sarah as supposed to be kind of a dick. Yeah. Because the comic book character you can easily buy as he, when you, being you, kind of a you dick. You see Michael Sarah, and you already have this this judgment. Right. Because he plays the same damn character every time, it right. seems. 
But then you watch it again, and you're like, and okay, well, the, he's not the, the same super guy. The super high-pitched voice doesn't help him. Yeah. He sounds like a fucking he just, bitch. He looks like a kid. He looks like a bitch. He has the weirdest he face out, but... ever, by the way. I never <laughs> realized how fucking weird that dude looks until this movie. Like, I was just staring at him. I was like, oh, my God, this dude is fucking weird looking. That's all I could think every time they showed, like, a uh-huh. close-up of his face. Because um, he has, like, this super long neck and his whole... I don't know. Sorry, Michael Sarah. I don't mean to, like, put you on blast or anything, but you're fucking weird looking. <laughs> Just letting you know. Whatever. You're rich and famous. You don't care. Yeah. He probably does care. Nobody wants to be told they look fucking weird. But We anyway. already called him a bitch. <laughs> right. Well, he plays bitch characters. He knows that much. That's, but Scott Pilgrim's not really a bitch, and that's why it's confusing. Seen so great, and this is the end. Right. Um, parody. But... To talk about the more technical aspects, because we, we're mostly, I've been going on and on about how it compares to the comic, but, you know, we're supposed to be looking at it as an Edgar Wright movie, and it feels like one. It definitely um, is more strong in the references and everything, whereas, you know, with the last two films, it felt like it was just sort of really subtle references, and in this yeah. one, it's like, this is a video game they world. They played the music from Zelda. It's right. like... The and sound effects. That was another funny thing. If I'm, I, I can't stop talking about the comics. Another funny thing about that is the comics never felt that heavy on the game. Yeah, and that stuff. I, 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 I wondered how exactly that came about. Um, because yeah, it's. I mean, it's, it's like not. You, uh, the comics couldn't have had eight bit music. They're comics. Right. <laughs> There's a lot, a lot less of it. Like it really, fe- and there's a lot more variety in the references too. Like whereas mm. the movie feels like it's. Mostly references to gaming and music, like, or hipster culture. Like, yeah. it really simplifies it down to gaming and hipster culture and music. And the comics have references to all kinds of shit. Like, just anything they could possibly, movies, you know, all kinds of culture. And it makes me think back to how, like, film crit Hulk, who kind of got us started on this Edgar Wright kick anyway, talked about how what he loves about Edgar Wright is that he feels like his movies are part of a zeitgeist, where the characters feel like they're really part of the modern age and they communicate in a modern way Mm -hmm. and in the modern age we communicate largely through references and the comic does this perfectly like it constantly communicates through references it is exactly like that spaced is like that scott pilgrim i mean uh fucking Shaun of the dead's like that but i don't know that scott pilgrim is as much like that it's not it's not like the characters so much communicate through references as the movie itself communicates through references you know what Mm -hmm. i mean like we don't hear, like, we hear the one guy, like, name drop Zelda, but we don't hear them, like, communicating through lines from Zelda, but the movie itself communicates feelings through music from Zelda. Yeah. So, I don't know, it's interesting. It's almost like the movie itself is, like, the the character is not Scott Pilgrim, but the movie or something, you know, or the movie is Scott Pilgrim himself. Do you know what I mean? Nah. It's like his emotions are the movie. I'm stretching it out. I'm just saying, <laughs> you get what I mean. Yeah. I don't know. It's like it's There's definitely some metaphorical shit going on. Yeah, I mean, the metaphor in this movie is a lot more obvious than yeah. like. I mean, well, I thought the metaphor in Shaun of the Dead was obvious. You didn't really think it was so obvious that it was. <laughs> well, I mean, after you explained it, it was right. obvious. Like each of these movies definitely uses the idea of, you know the world itself reflects the emotions of the character. But Scott Pilgrim is super blatant about it. I mean, yeah. there's, like, meters to show you how he feels on the screen and shit, so... Yeah. Self-respect swords. And- <laughs> right, his sort of self-respect. So, that the whole symbolic part of it is very easily understood, and uh, maybe that's what the real separation from the comic is, is that the comic's not as easy to just read and understand everything. It's a lot more complex... The communication is a lot more dense. There's a lot more feelings flying around, and characters change their emotions a lot more. There's a lot more tone shifts and stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's just so much longer and gets so much more done. And the movie just kind of feels like uh, just a normal movie with some fun stuff, you know, that is really funny. So, I don't know. It's I I don't know how I would feel if I hadn't read the comic, you know. I don't feel better about it. Do you think so? <laughs> like, I probably I thought it was would. Great. And I was like, oh man. Oh, I love the cool. movie. Don't get me wrong. Like, but yeah, I can't. I can't not think about something like, why, why knives? You had so much more to do with the comic. <laughs> like, it's it's difficult. But that's the kind of context. I'm never gonna be able to unsee that. You know, like mm-hmm. I'm always gonna because I love the movie, so I'm gonna keep watching it and I'm gonna keep reading the comic because it's my favorite. But I'll never be able to like reconcile that 
this thing also exists. Yeah. But Edgar Wright did a great job on the screenplay and directing. It's directed perfectly. The editing style is very different from the last two because it's the editor... The two editors are both from Spaced, and he had one of them on the other two movies and the other one on this one. So it's a different editor. There's not as many of the quick cuts, but they are there. And There's one scene where they yeah. start to do the quick cuts, and then he ties his shoe yes. for like a straight 20 seconds, which was fucking clever. Just lots of awesome references, awesome visual gags. Definitely, they they had all the CG and shit, and I'm like, that had to be. A, it was interesting because he had he doesn't have that in his other movies, and it's right. like that had to be a big step for him to do all that shit. Like they, it's so much more going on visually. Yeah, yeah, interesting. Um, it feels a lot different. It's not British. That's the biggest difference, really. <laughs> Is that everything he's done till now is very British. And it had the same like, actors, very, and this one has right. none of those guys. It's, it's totally it's different. totally different. But that, the funny thing is, because he talks about that in uh, the interview I watched with him, where the guy asked him, like, how did it feel to work with, like, totally different people? And he's like, well, the entire staff is the same. Yeah, I figured that Like, much. it's the same people he made the other movies with. It's just that it's different actors and a different place. He was like, you know, it's not it's not London anymore now. It's Canada, and it's not... Simon Pegg and Nick Frost, it's Michael Sarah. So, yeah, like the. But it feels. It, it makes a huge difference. Like, even though you can tell it's written by the same guy, the lack of Britishness is, like, astounding. It's a whole <laughs> different thing, you know? I don't know. I think they did an amazing job. I think it's a great adaptation. I don't Could have. Could there have been a better adaptation? No, there really exactly. couldn't have been, in movie <laughs> form, anyway. Yeah. Like, if they made a full TV show of it, they could do it right, but it would pretty much just be a retread of the comic. Like, because mm-hmm. they have, like, the... There's an animated episode for, like, a prequel to the movie that I think explains the, the his relationship with Kim. I think that has its own prequel, mm-hmm. uh, like, short. And I haven't seen that yet, so I'm going to probably check that out at some point. And I also want to play the video game because it's fucking cool. It's got animation the the video game is entirely designed by pat robertson like visually who is my favorite gra- only graphic designer i know the name of he does amazing ugh, amazing 8 and 16 bit art on uh, a lot of it's on tumblr and i follow his tumblr it's great stuff also the soundtracks by fucking Anamanaguchi, who made one of my favorite albums of this year endless fantasy so i really want to play this fucking game i'm not a big fan of beat em ups but i love scott pilgrim Anamanaguchi, and pat robertson so as far as i'm sure i think his name's pat robertson i'm I'm probably fucking it up. No, Robert Patterson. Rob, Rob, no, that's that's no. You're thinking of Pattinson, and that's the guy from Twilight. Rob Patty Pat. Pat Robert? No, maybe it's maybe it's Rob. No, I don't know. Whatever his fucking name is, I'll put a link to his Tumblr in the description Dick once Patty. I look it up. I think it's Pat Robertson. In any case, I want to play the video game. I want to watch the short. Scott Pilgrim, the TV show, would be a good show, but it would be the exact same as the comic, and that would be pointless. But the movie is something completely different, and that makes it cool. It's the best adaptation you could possibly ask for for Scott Pilgrim, unless they had another half hour to fully flesh out Knives as a character. Because she kind of deserves it, because they gave her a lot of attention. Tell me anything else you can think about it. Because I, I, I feel like I... Mostly... Anything I was thinking about is long gone now. Why? Because you talked a lot. Think back on it. Like, what were you thinking? I don't know. I'm, I'm done. Take a second. Think about it. Figure it out. What were you I, thinking? I don't know. I already said everything. I Nothing think. about any characters or the pacing or the no, anything? I mean, everything was scenes. pretty cool. Was no scenes good. you want to mention? I like the vegan. That was funny. The vegan shit was fucking hilarious. Oh, my God. Epic. I liked it. I liked the dialogue. The characters were cool. I liked the shit, like... What's the password? Whatever. <laughs> right. Like, <laughs> that was, oh, God. Perfect understanding it's of, so like, funny. modern hipsters. <laughs> like, e- like I said, even if this movie was, like, not really, like, deep or symbolic, just on the fucking comedy level, it's genius. Yeah. So, it's worth it for that. Um, if you want to see a really fucking funny movie, go watch Scott Pilgrim vs. Like the World. I like it was a pretty good representation of modern youth. Right. How they are. <laughs> whatever but if you do see the movie or if you have seen the movie and you haven't read the comic read it it's an absolute classic it's right up i mean we're talking like top five favorite things you know like this is up there with like my little pony and fucking homestuck for me so you should definitely fucking read it anyway the next movie that we're gonna do by him will be at world's end i think so Whoa. it'll be the last one he's only directed four feature films oh, no. um, other than fistful of fingers we are not covering the adventures of Tintin because he co-wrote that and did not direct it. And we're only doing 
writer director credits. So yep, yeah, yeah. That's all for now.